Welcome to a short presentation on how we are linking in situ and in orbit measured optical properties of Swiss lakes. My name is Daniel Odermatt. The work that I'm about to show was performed in collaboration with Gami Minodo, Abul Fazil Irani Rahagi, and Johnny Wüst. We work at the Swiss Federal Institute of Aquatic Science and Technology, EAVAC, and at the Swiss Federal Institute of Technology in Lausanne, uh, or in short, EPFL. The best data we have is acquired in this location here, which is next to the northern shore of Lake Geneva, about 400 meters from the land. In the top right of the photo, you can see a 10 by 10 meter research platform on which a large number, a large variety of limnological measurements are performed regularly. We have a concession to keep the platform there between 2019 and 2027 and hope, of course, to extend this concession. In the center bottom of the photo, you can see the Tetis profiler, which is almost two meters high and performs automated measurements of optical parameters. It was first deployed in October 2018, and since then it has operated about half the time. The other half of the time um, being needed for repair and maintenance. The Tetis profiler ascends every three to six hours and acquires measurements during these ascents, uh, which supplied us with more than 1,300 AOP and IOP profiles up to now, covering all seasons apart from the months of July to September. Some of the data that we acquired in these periods are shown here. In the top, we have absorption line height indicating phytoplankton abundance. In the bottom, we have two plots of backscattering at 700 nanometers indicating particle abundance and, back, uh, and turbidity. The cases on the left represent late November and early December 2018. On the right, we see a contrasting case from the spring bloom in 2020, namely the second half of April. Besides uh, the main parameters, you can also see indicated in these plots the euphotic depth as a white line and the thermocline depth as a black dashed line. Visualizing the data in such a manner gives us a lot of ideas of what's happening in the water and how the dynamics in lake optics uh, come into place. One example is here on the 8th of uh, December, we have in an otherwise relatively constant, homogeneously limited product, uh, productivity, a sudden break and an increase in the thermocline to less than a third of the previous situation. This is directly related to wind mixing and a distribution of, of the phytoplankton that was previously con concentrated in the surface layer and afterwards takes some longer time to, to reestablish. Uh, very striking, of course, is the near surface vertical gradient in the spring case where the thermocline depth is considerably uh, lower or considerably shallower than the euphotic depth, leading to these deep chlorophyll maxima, which will significantly uh, affect the relationship between absorption and other optical parameters and the water leaving reflectance. Contrasting, we have a very nicely mixed surface layer uh, in the less productive part of the year. We also see, for example, an intrusion down here uh, where we have a highly turbid water that reaches the Lexplore platform at the depth of almost 40 meters. This intrusion is associated with the Rhone River, which plunges into the lake uh, at several dozens of kilometers from the Play, uh, from the location of the Lexpo platform. Um, but from there, the turbid water is transported to the platform at this depth without a lot of mixing. Uh, so this particle freight is out of reach for any remote sensing sensor. And it's very important to understand such processes also when interpreting or making conclusions from remote sensory data. 
Apart from these insights in uh, lake processes based on inherent optical properties, we can also perform standard operations using the TETIS measurements of inherent optical properties, uh, which usually means a comparison of atmospherically corrected reflectance and ground measured uh, reflectance in the first place. With the TETIS measurements, we can additionally uh, simulate and model a second ground-based in situ reference reflectance using the absorption attenuation, chlorophyll and backscattering measurements from the TETIS profilers. In this way, we obtain an uncertainty estimation by comparing the two ground uh, measurement-based reflectances, flag the measurements that achieve a better match uh, from the two sources, and then use only the quality checked and, and better matching reflectance measurements for validation. In addition, we also included an optimization step because we found that the backscattering measurements performed by the sensors on TTIS are often not very sensitive, especially during clear water phases. So we included this optimization step, which not only allowed us to, to get better and more realistic reflectance out of the simulations, but it also revealed a nice seasonality in the backscattering, which is shown on this figure. For the entire period in which we have this data available, even though the samples may come from different years uh, between 2018 and 2021. On the x-axis, we see scattering at 550 nanometers measured by the sensors on TETIS, and then we have the optimized backscattering at 550 nanometers. Um, both are fairly low towards the turn of the year or at around the turn of the year. But then in springtime, as productivity increases, we have a drop in backscattering on one hand and uh, continuous increasing in scattering on the other hand. Um, the backscattering ratio finally increases again after the end of the productive season, where when the nutrients around the middle of the year are depleted in the surface layer. Um, and accordingly, we have a, a larger impact of inorganic, inorganic particles again. By the way, the dashed line in black represents the Petzold phase, phase functions uh, backscattering ratio. So you can see that this is around the seasonal average for Lake Geneva. The data measured uh, at the LexPlore platform and by the TETIS profiler is increasingly made available in a portal called, called Data Lakes, which is accessible at airwalk-datalakes.ch. In this portal, we do not only want to make accessible the field sampled measurements from automated stations as well as our campaigns, but we also want to com combine it increasingly with hydrodynamic simulations as indicated by the surface currents with these white lines and remote sensing products uh, as this uh, chlorophyll map, which is in the background represented by blue and green colors. In such a visualization, you can immediately see how the two are related. And by providing this information along with the in situ measurements, uh, we also want to inspire users uh, to take new looks into additional data sources and promote both hydrodynamic simulations and remote sensing in this manner. Our remote sensing products are produced with this Python package called Sendcast, which is also publicly available. It essentially wraps a number of different SNAP operators, tools such as Polymer and even terrestrial uh, algorithms such as Sentucore. It downloads Sentinel-2 and 3 data automatically from different data sources, performs data processing jobs according to specified geographic parameters and time intervals. And with uh, a custom configuration of the processing job, you end up with a number of different products. We are currently validating these products for different lakes in Switzerland. And while we already have some dummy remote sensing products from Sentinel-3 in data lakes, we will replace them this summer with a validated and uh, error quantified product. 
We also have additional automated stations like this WISP station in Greifensee, for example. And on the left, you can see a visualization of how we present reflectance data in data lakes. So in summary, we showed how Lexplore enables unique optical measurements for aquatic science, as well as remote sensing, and especially on the interface of these two disciplines. Uh, we have high frequency dial measurements from the profiler that supports standalone products. Uh, we've seen the, the particle and uh, phytoplankton abundance, but we elaborate this further even to primary production estimates. Uh, we've seen examples of how it supports bio-optical modeling and earth observation product validation. We process our data and disseminate it using a number of open access tools, which you can find under the URL specified. And we want to make increasing numbers of data sets available in this portal. And some of our future fieldwork will also target alpine lakes. Um, and our ambition is to provide this future data, this campaign data in the same framework and using the same process or processing techniques. With this, uh, I want to close and look forward to some questions or comments. Thanks a lot for your attention.